So many times on my how to fix your AC videos, I have about 15 of them now in my AC fixing playlist, people start in the comments by saying, hi, my AC is not working. So I already tried replacing the contactor, but it's still not turning on. So I thought I would make this video to let people know that the contactor actually rarely ever fails. I very seldom replace these contactors in the field and I do a lot of AC calls. So the contactor in my unit, this is what it would look like all wired up. Almost every air conditioner will have a contactor that looks very similar to this one right here. So it'll have line voltage, 220 volt legs coming in on this side, L1 and L2, to get you a total of 240 volts. Then you have your control voltage on the sides. There's a blue and a yellow wire in mine that is controlled by the thermostat and the control board in the furnace. And then once this plunger pulls in, when the thermostat calls for cooling, the 240 volts goes through and powers up your compressor and the fan. So really, it's just a magnetic switch that is powered by the thermostat. And briefly on how it works, the coil, when I say coil, what I'm really saying is there's actually a spool of copper, a thin copper wire here, all wrapped up in a little bundle. And when there's current applied to that spool of wire called a coil, that coil gets magnetized and it pulls the little plunger in. By the way, old contactors, the plunger is just visible right on top. The newer ones have a cover over them just so that bugs don't get in them and get jammed in between the contacts. But even on the new ones, you can take off the two screws, the cover comes off, and here you see my two plungers. And by the way, there is two different kinds of contactors. There's the two pole, which means there ha it has two brakes, two plungers, or there's one like mine right here that residential air conditioners have. As you can see, mine has just one pole, meaning it only has one plunger, and then the second leg is always there. So actually right now I have voltage at my capacitor, 120 volts, so you don't wanna be prodding anything even if this plunger is out. In fact, before touching any wires or any connectors, make sure you verify that the power is off. So anyway, this coil gets magnetized, it pulls in the plungers, and sends power through. And all this is, is literally just a magnetized power switch, in and out. And 240 volts comes in one side on L1 and L2. Most contactors will be labeled. Uh, mine looks like it's not labeled. But typically it'll say L1 and L2 for where the power comes in from the disconnect and T1, T2 where it comes out. And like I said previously, there's really not much to them and these contactors rarely ever fail, but they are pretty cheap parts. You can get them for like eight bucks maybe on Amazon. Also, one thing that I wanna note is on older contactors that don't have this cover, many times bugs will crawl in like an ant or some kind of beetle will crawl in in between the contacts and this metal strip. So when this thing gets magnetized and tries to pull in, the bug will prevent it from closing all the way or sometimes the contacts themselves just get worn out to the point where they don't make contact. But if you do have a bug in there, all you gotta do is just pluck it out, clean it the best you can, maybe even blow it out with some compressed air, and then you should be good to go, and the plunger will start closing in all the way again. Now, even though these things rarely ever fail, they do fail, and the way to check them, the only way really is with a meter to check if it's bad or not. Uh, one check is to check for resistance, this little horseshoe symbol right here. As you can see, it says OL right here. To check if your meter leads are good. You just connect them both together and you should have some kind of resi resistance. Zero, it's very tiny, but you should have resistance. If it says OL, that means one of your meter leads or the wire is broken and you need new, uh, new leads. But anyway, you set it to the resistance, the ohms, and you go from the contactor coil, terminals on one side and on the other side. You put one lead on one side of the contactor coil and the other lead on the other side. And as you can see, I am getting about 14 ohms. And anywhere from like 12 to 27 is typically where these things will range. If it's very low or very high, like in the 40s for example, then you do have something going on. But most of the time, if the contactor coil is bad, it'll read OL, like that. That means the contactor coil inside of here, the wires must have burnt out. Sometimes you'll even see that this portion right here is melted. And of course, when you're checking for resistance, make sure that your power is disconnected and take the wires that are connected to the terminals off. Another check you can do is to check voltage. So with your thermostat calling for cooling, 
the furnace control board should be sending 24 volts out to the contactor coil. So you would set the meter to voltage and just to the same terminals, put your two leads and you should have anywhere from 24 to 29 volts reading on your meter. If you have zero volts like mine, then for some reason power is not getting to your contactor. That means either your three amp fuse is blown inside the house or if you have a condensate overflow switch or float switch that could be tripped as well especially if you have attic units those will usually have a float switch installed to prevent any flood damage coming through your ceiling or if your power is making it outside one easy way to check if it is or not is to trace the thermostat wire which is this brown wire right here coming out of the wall of your house or to disconnect and coming into your unit as you can see in my case it comes out right in here this brown wire will have two more wires in it this is a typical wiring setup a red and a white. If you stick your meter leads to the metal part in both wire nuts, you should be having about 27 volts coming from inside while your thermostat is calling for cooling. If you're not getting 27 volts, that means your contactor is not getting the voltage it needs, therefore it is not pulling in. Well guys, and that's about as far as I'll go with my diagnosing because a lot of my other videos I cover all that stuff in. So if you want, just check out my AC playlist for more of those videos. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time.